Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 28. Verse 1, once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. Paul had finished three missionary journeys. He was arrested in the city of Jerusalem. And from that point on, he became a prisoner of Rome. He will be tried three times in the city of Caesarea. And after two years in jail in Caesarea, he will be shipped off to Rome as a prisoner. They left in late autumn, which is a euphemism for the expression early winter. They should have never been on the Mediterranean Sea during that time of year. But the captain and the owner of the cargo and the ship had much to gain, and they took an unnecessary risk. They acted recklessly. The ship would sink. There would be days or weeks of storms. All the men would survive, but the cargo would be lost, and the ship would sink. 276 survivors swam to the shore of Malta, the island in the Mediterranean. And that's what it says in Acts 28, verse 1, the last chapter of the only book of the history of the early church in the Bible. This chapter, which is the last chapter, begins following a shipwreck. Once we were safe on shore, we discovered we were on the island of Malta. They had been through a storm, and they didn't even know where they were. But they were happy to be alive. The Bible reveals that they were warmly greeted. The people of the island were so very kind to us. It was cold. It was wet. It was still raining from the storm that they had survived. And the islanders built a warm fire right there on the shore, welcoming all of those that had survived. Paul began to gather up wood. He had an arm full of sticks, and he was placing them on the fire that was burning. When unexpectedly, a venomous snake was driven out by the heat and bit Paul on the hand. Can anyone have a rougher go at it than the Apostle Paul? This prophetic writer of many of the letters in the New Testament, this world missionary that had traveled throughout Asia Minor, Macedonia, and present-day Greece, is arrested in Jerusalem. And when he's arrested, it's based on false accusations. He became a prisoner because other people lied. There were mobs. There were riots. Paul would be beaten as a prisoner, and from Jerusalem, 40 miles away, he would travel covered by night for his own safety to the city of Caesarea, where he remained a prisoner. He was tried three more times, two governors and the king, King Agrippa, and then, as a prisoner in shackles, he shipped to Rome, but he shipped as a prisoner. This free man that was well-read, well-educated, would be likened to a lawyer or a scholar. This man that had become the leader of the early New Testament church as a writer of books like 1st and 2nd Corinthians and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians is now a prisoner of Rome. 
And though he had traveled the, the Mediterranean before, it was as a free man, but not this trip. And when he spoke up and he advised the captain and the officers that they should not be sailing this time of year because it was late autumn, early winter, they reduced him to just being the voice of a prisoner. And they did not take his advice. Number one, he was a prisoner on the ship in shackles. Number two, the ship is going to sink. Because of God's grace, everyone will survive. But what an ordeal it's been. They'll swim to the shore of Malta. They'll land happy to be alive. And the Bible says that when they were warmly greeted, the islanders had built a fire to help those that had just survived a massive shipwreck. Could anything else go wrong in a person's life? Becoming a prisoner because of lies? Going through a shipwreck because somebody wouldn't listen to you? And now, while well, he's warming himself as it's pouring down rain, a venomous snake bites him on the hand. The Bible says that the people on the island that had been so warm welcoming immediately reacted with judgment. The people on the island saw what was hanging from the hand of the Apostle Paul and they assumed that Paul was no good. They jumped to the conclusion that because this bad thing happened to this man, he must be a bad man. He must be a wicked, an evil man. He must be a thief. He must be a robber. He must be a murderer. And he's getting what he deserves. And they truly expected the Apostle Paul to swell up from the bite of the venomous snake and fall over dead. But thanks be unto God, the Bible tells us Paul shook it off. Paul shook off that deadly snake. Paul shook off that poisonous snake. He shook it off into the fire and Paul was unharmed. I want to share my heart with you today on the subject of shaking it off. When you are bitten by that that is toxic, that that is deadly, that venom, do you shake it off? Or are people right? Do you deserve to be treated the way that you are treated? Do you deserve to go through the valley of the shadow of death because it's a judgment of God upon your life? That's exactly the same advice that Job's three friends gave to him in the book of Job. They judged him in the same way the islanders that did not know Paul judged him. He's getting what he deserved. The story of Job is so heart-wrenching because these three men that spoke such things into his life were considered to be his friends. And they judged him. And they said, all of these things are happening because you're an evil, wicked man, because you have made God Almighty angry with you. Have you experienced that in your life? Have people spread rumors about you? They've lied about you? I want you to consider what Paul does when he shakes off this venomous snake. I want you to consider with me today what Paul has literally gone through. A free man becomes a prisoner with shackles. A free man is not only a prisoner 
but he goes through a horrific storm that ends in shipwreck. And if life could not get any more difficult when he saved and walked on safe shore to be warmed by a fire, he's immediately bitten by a deadly snake. And if that's not the worst of it, the people he's never met before judge him. And out loud they speak of him as being an evil man, an unrighteous man, a man that deserves the death penalty from a deadly snake. But I want you to see something in the power of God of what it means to be transformed by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see what it is to be baptized and filled with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives because this man, Paul, though he was a prisoner, though he is a survivor of a shipwreck, though he is bitten and criticized and judged, he shook it off. He shook it off. The Bible says he shook it off. Jesus called 12 apostles. He empowered them with all the authority from heaven. The Bible says that Jesus gave the apostles the kingdom keys. And he sent them out with the keys to the kingdom to deliver those that are filled with darkness, to deliver those in the name of Jesus that are sick and disease, to set free those that have been bound by demons. He sent them out. But the Bible says in the book of Matthew, the book of Mark, the book of Luke, and the book of John, I'll read from you from Matthew chapter 10, verse 14, but recognize it's found in all of the Gospels. Jesus said, if anyone rejects you, if anyone does not receive you or your message, shake the dust off your sandals. Don't let it get in your soul. Don't let it stain your heart. And certainly, Jesus is saying, don't allow the opinions of other people redirect you. Don't react to what they think. Friend, there's only one opinion that matters, and that's the opinion of Almighty God. There's only one voice that counts, and that's what the Spirit of Christ is saying to your life. It's not about the Roman governor. It's not about the kings. It's not about the captain of a ship. If you are in the hand of Almighty God, you will be provided for and you will be protected. Though you are in shackles, though your ship sinks, though that deadly snake bites you, Paul would write it like this. Paraphrased, he wrote, you are not a victim. You are a victor. That's what Paul wrote. He wrote it to the church in Rome. You know it best perhaps like this. We are more than conquerors in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a victor. You're not a prisoner. You're not a survivor of a shipwreck. You're not a survivor of a snake bite. You are a victor in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus taught us to shake it off. To shake off the toxic venom of the people in the village. Their, their opinions. Nobody wants to be rejected. It bruises the heart. It hurts the spirit. We want to be loved. We want to be liked. Rejection is a very, very difficult thing to do, deal with for any of us. 
But Jesus told the apostles before he sent them out, you must know how to shake it off. Paul the apostle would travel on all of these different missionary journeys. He would start in Asia Minor, move on to Macedonia and Greece, and he always followed the same format. He went to the synagogue in every city. And the same thing always happened. He was rejected. And the Bible says, and the Bible says in the book of Acts that when he was rejected, he shook it off. And he went forward. As he shook off the venomous snake, so he shook off the rejection of the people in the synagogues. And when the entire city turned on him, and there were riots and mobs, and they beat him, and one time they, they, they attempted to stone him to death, and to, when they left, they thought he was dead. He got up, and he went right back into the city. When he dealt with things that were overwhelming, he did exactly what Jesus said. He shook it off. Later, he would write to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Thanks be unto God, he wrote. We have the victory through the precious work of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. My precious brother and sister in the Lord Jesus, you are a child of the King. You are a victor. The victory has already been won. It was defined as Christ was nailed to the cross. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is all about. You have the victory. Now shake it off. You have the victory. Now say with me in your prayer, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. What has bitten you? What poison, venom, has bitten you? What is that toxic, deadly venom that bites so many Christians? Emotions, deadly poison emotions, they'll bite you, they'll attach to you. Bitterness, anger, and even hate. It will try to attach itself like a deadly snake to your hand or to your heart. It wants to own you. It wants to destroy you. Like a deadly poison, it wants to flow through the veins in your body. It wants to flow through the thoughts of your mind. I'm talking about that that is deadly. I'm talking about that that is venomous flowing through the veins of your body. It wants to flow, that toxic poison wants to flow through your thoughts, causing you to become bitter, angry, and hate. It literally wants to flow through your body and through your soul, your thoughts, until it seeps into your spirit. It wants to destroy you. There are poisonous, venomous emotions, and they will attach themselves to you, to your hand or to your heart or to your head, to your thoughts or to your soul or to your spirit. In my prayer journal, I wrote the words anticipatory emotions. Those toxic emotions I speak of here are things that are in front of us. Things that have not yet happened, but we are afraid they will happen. They're poison. Worry, stress, anxiety, they're poisons to your soul. Jesus said, do not worry. Do not be anxious over anything. Don't get nervous as you look to the future. Don't allow that venom attach itself to you and paralyze you with fear. The first I wrote down is in 
anticipatory emotions. The second I wrote down is regretful emotions. That is those things that have happened in the past and they affect you as real as poison in your vein. They are guilt. They are humiliation. They are shame. Jesus came to set the captive free, to deliver us from guilt, to deliver us from humiliation, to deliver us and set us free of our past. Guilt can cause people to never try again. Humiliation and shame can cause people to never try again. A young person applies to go to a college and they take an entrance exam and they fail it. One time they fail it and they never try again. They let shame or humiliation poison them and rob them of the future. People make a mistake and they can't go forward. They are poisoned by their fear of the future they are poisoned by the shame of their past. Toxic relationships can seep into your heart. Unforgiveness, discord, hostility with others. Jesus teaches us to shake it off. Brother and sister, you hear what the Word of God is teaching us this hour. Jesus is calling us to shake it off. Let it go. Let it go. And he taught us how to do it. Number one, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. We must not be distracted by the size or the intensity of the wave. But Jesus said, keep your eyes on me. Secondly, Jesus taught us to look forward. Jesus teaches us in our lives as the story goes in the Old Testament in Genesis. Looking backwards will turn you into a pillar of salt. You cannot keep your eyes on Jesus and what he has for you tomorrow if you're turning around and looking at where you've been. You must be forward focused. You must be forward thinking. You must be forward walking. Number three, always walk forward. Don't walk backwards, walk forward. And when you do, it's okay to pause. But it's not okay to turn back. Keep on walking. Paul explained it to us, to the church in Philippi. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 13. Forgetting the past... And looking forward to what lies ahead. Did you know that the book of Philippians was written by Paul when he was a prisoner in Rome? Did you know that Paul had become a prisoner, had become a survivor of a shipwreck, had become a survivor of a snake bite? And he wrote to you and I to be encouraged that we don't look to the past. We look to the future. We look for what God is about to do. Paul would write the book of Ephesians from prison. He would write the book of Philippians from prison. And he wrote it, sister and brother, he wrote it because he was looking forward and not backwards. I press on to reach the end of the race, Paul said, to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling you and I. Oh, I want you to see it today. I want you to see it today. I want you to see that Paul was bitten by a snake on the hand, a deadly snake. And then I want you to see on the same day, on the same island, he got up and he found out that one of the high officials on the island had a sick father. He went there and he took the same hand he had been bitten with and he laid it on this sick and dying man. And he was 
instantly, marvelously healed. He then took that hand and there were lines of people and friends. He was praying for the sick and they were miraculously being healed. Shake it off. You have the work of Almighty God to do. Shake it off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shake it off.